So this is a short demo about the Visual Studio Code, VS Code extension for development with SAP Cloud Application Programming Model, CAP. The extension for VS Code for CAP development has been around since 2018. VS Code itself, I think, has been around a couple of years longer than that. And it was announced in 2018, originally available on the tools.hana.ondemand.com site, but more recently, specifically uh, in July of this year, uh, the extension moved from that tools.hana.ondemand.com site to the VS Code marketplace itself. You can see more details of that in the release notes for CAP itself on the CAP.io website, cap.cloud.sap. And along with this little announcement, this, these release notes in particular for July 2020 contain a lot of information about what's new for the extension, and there's a ton of stuff. So here it is available on the uh, Visual Studio Marketplace. You can hit the install to install it into your particular instance of VS Code. We're gonna explore a few of these features really, really high level, just to give you an idea of what it's all about and what it provides for you. Let me switch to my favorite environment, which is of course the terminal. And we're gonna use the CDS command line tool to uh, initiate a new project. I'm gonna call it inno, which creates a directory. Um, I'm going to uh, invoke VS Code on that directory and it's going to open up that directory in VS Code. You can see, as we might expect, the app, DB, and sur folders here. That's a classic sort of pattern for our uh, CAP application. You can see already that uh, VS Code itself is saying, oh, there's some recommendations that you might want to have a look at using for this particular uh, project, you know, looking at the files within it. It recommends ESLint and Prettier. Uh, I'm not using those right now, but while I am um, here, let me just show you what I've got installed on this particular VS Code. Let me close all these um, all these tabs for now. We'll make this a little bit bigger. So I've got a you know I've got a, a fair amount. I've got the uh, SAP Fury Tools Extension Pack. I've got uh, some tools from some folks from the community, like this one here from Jodel. Um, I've got the most important extension ever, which is of course the Vim emulation for VS Code, and the one we're talking about here is the Cap extension. The cap extension has lots of features, and there are some sort of really general features as well. Uh, if you get if you get stuck with this particular extension, you can use the command palette and VS Code report an issue, which is a generic VS Code uh, facility. Say uh, it's an issue with an extension, in particular, it's the cap extension, and it gives us a little link here, which will take us to the SAP community where you can ask a question and it prompts you for uh, the sorts of information you should supply when asking the question to help people help you. Anyway, uh, that's enough of that. We can we'll close that. We can also see from the command part, I just noticed it there, you can also you know, call up the release notes directly in VS Code itself. For me, one of those important uh, aspects of uh, VS Code, of course, is it gives you sort of, you know, direct access to a shell um, in, this, in a similar way to uh, one of the best features, in my opinion, of the SAP Business Application Studio. It gives us, gives you access to a proper shell environment as well. I'm gonna use this shell environment just to use a, a CDS command to flesh out this app a little bit. CDS add samples. Uh, and now we've got in the DB directory, we've got uh, some data in the form of a, some CSV uh, value, uh, records there. And we've got a data model and we've also got a service definition. Immediately we can see that uh, we get lovely syntax highlighting. So that's one of the features, you know, one of the basic features one might expect. Notice as well, we've got this little outline here, which we can also see here. So this is this is also a facility that's brought to us. You know, it's a built-in facility with VS Code, and then CAP uses that facility to expand on the things that we're looking at here. So um, if we have a look at another feature, another really basic feature, um, I can hit uh, Control Space and call up you know a number of snippets i'm going to use the doc snippet to start off some documentation so um material for gaining knowledge that's a good description of uh, the books entity i guess now the immediate uh, impact of that is obvious of course you've got documentation it's quite easy to to write that but also when you hover over um you get the you get the description of what that is, and that of course is you know not not so useful when you're directly below what you're looking at anyway. But and this is a way 
for us to explore another feature. Uh, when you're looking at a usage or a reference to this particular books entity, um, you can also see what that books description is. So these are another two features that the cap uh, extension gives you an, an ability to jump to the definition of something you're looking at or jump to where that something is used. So if we hit go to references here, it'll take us to the uh, the reference to that books entity in this service. And we can see there as well when we hover over, oh yeah, of course it's material for gaining knowledge, right? So that's great. Um, so those are you know really, really basic uh, features of the uh, CAP extension. So let's, let's dig in a little bit more. Uh, let's start to um, add something to the data model, first of all, and explore just by doing uh, what it might give us. In fact, let's move this terminal down a little bit. Uh, why don't we add another entity? And we can already see we have the facility to um, call up various sort of helpers and snippets and so on and completion. So I could say entity, uh, authors, I might want to use a CUID. In fact, no, let's not use a CUID for now, uh, but let's add a, a name as a, as a string, as key, and notice as well, there we go, there's sort of completion of types, uh, which is really convenient. What we'll also do, let's just add a relationship here. If we say author of a, a given book is an association to one, it's quite nice to actually realize that it's not just two, you can say to one uh, authors there. And we'll go down here and say, um, what are we saying here? Books, the books that the author has written, association to many books on uh, books dot, and then we get completion there as well. Okay, what, what do we all pick? Of course, we want to pick that for the relationship equals self equals me. And notice as well, we can already start seeing another feature of the cap extension, which will tell us, you know, if there is some, something syntactically incorrect. I mean, let's just do something a little bit more basic. You know, if I've misspelt that, it'll say, hmm, you know, there's something not quite right going on there. And in fact, if you hit F8, it'll tell us exactly what's wrong, where it's wrong, and, you know, the, the actual detail of the problem. So let's just undo that and save that. Now, uh, if we have a, well, in fact, what, what we could do is we could now go into the service definition and I'm going to say uh, entity writers as projection on authors. Now, um, it's saying, well, I don't really understand quite what you mean by authors. That's why it's underlined that with a squealy line. But notice another sort of built-in feature of VS Code, which the cap extension is making use of, is this quick fix feature. So if we click this quick fix here, it tells us, well, yeah, I can help you out here. I can uh, bring in the author's entity from that model. So I'm gonna click that and it'll quick fix it for us. So as you can see now it's added to the uh, using statement here, and it's brought in specifically my.bookshop.authors. And of course, it's reformatted it as well. Uh, talking of reformatting, you've got the general uh, format document feature, another feature of the cap extension, and that will format it you know, in a really nice way. Um, if you're used to using tools like Prettier, for example, for JavaScript, uh, or, or YAML or JSON, uh, you'll appreciate what this is all about. And you can see it's left even a, a little gap here to write our own little annotation if we wanted to do as well. Um, so that's another great feature. So I'm gonna save that as well. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it uh, in terms of what I wanted to explore in this really short uh, demo. There's plenty more from a features perspective. One more thing we'll do. Uh, in fact, let's just start out by saying CDS watch. Uh, to start up a little sort of, you know, in-memory service. And while we're uh, waiting for that to start, let's go here and add, uh, do you want to accept it? Yes, thank you very much, uh, Mac OS. Uh, and we'll add a new file here and we'll call it the same name as the, the CDS definition for the service, cat service.js, which will give us the ability to load or write rather, um, you know, a bit of a custom implementation. So we'll say module.exports, equals, um, it takes a, it gets a server object or a service object, and we'll say serve dot, you know, after a read of a, uh, what have we got here, books, then uh, what do we get? We get some results passed to this anonymous function here, and we'll just say console.log results. 
Okay, that'll do for now. Um, so let's save that. Okay, and let's open up this little link here. We can see that there's the, uh, the, the familiar CAP service page. And we can go to books, for example, and we can see the books. Uh, we can see there's no authors there because I've not filled any CSV values for the authors entity uh, for the in-memory persistence, but that doesn't matter. Let's go back here and instead let's let's close that. We actually saw just then, I think, uh, there it is. There's the app, there's the result of the console.log, but instead of looking at it there, let's set a breakpoint. One of the things that uh, the CAP extension does really well for VS Code users is uh, pro provide really comfortable facilities for debugging. So I'm gonna set a debug statement here, a breakpoint statement rather, and then start running it in debug mode, uh, which I can use with F5, and that will start the uh, the, the CAP service up running again. You can see it's running now on the debug console rather than in the terminal. Now, if I go back to the browser and hit refresh, uh, we get stopped at this breakpoint here. So we can now start to, let's clear this out of the way. We can start to examine things. There's the results, results. Um, uh, let's just have a look at the first, the second result, results. One is uh, Jane Eyre. Let's change the title, results. Uh, one dot title equals banana and then continue and we can say we can have a look down here there we go banana we've changed the title of the second book so this really really just scratches the surface of the the wonderful features that the cap extension for vs code gives us as developers not only for um, design time uh, but also for runtime contexts okay that's it thanks for watching